Hey guys, uh, today we have a very special tour today with my butt buddy, Jonathan <laughs> Ward. Uh, no, we're uh, here in California, Chatsworth, California, right? Okay. Yes, this is true. It's only taking me like four or five visits to figure out where you are. Uh, and we're gonna take a little tour and walk in the shop and listen to Jonathan say stuff. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to Icon. Our company is all about revisiting transportation from the past in a modern context, which we screw up in various ways. But, uh, but basically, uh, I've managed to avoid having a real job and to uh, find a way to celebrate uh, my OCD. So it's like the beauties and the details to us. So we do the Broncos based on the first gen Ford Broncos, and we do the Thrift Masters based on the 47 to 53. Chevys, and those are, are using the term gently production models because they're all because you repeat. Most yeah, it's like the engineering is yeah. standardized and then amortized, and we do. We've delivered, I think this is number 170, so wow. we're just under 200 of these. We're in the 90s on Broncos, we're into the 20s on the Thrift Masters, and then there's the Freaks and Geeks, the Derelicts, and the Reformers, which are one and done, um, right behind camera is the first one we did, which was my personal ride. So this is a uh, DeSoto front clip on a Chrysler Town and Country. Oh, I wouldn't even catch that. Wagon, yeah, because the, the TNC had more like a luxury liner yeah. interior, like mm -hmm. kind of marine inspired. But you like versus the grill. Versus the front clip is hideous. But the DeSoto interior and dash was really plain Jane, because that okay. was like the entry model. And it was just luck, because I stumbled into this car like two months after and 20 miles from where I found this car. And I was like, game on, now we're gonna build it. So this is called a derelict. So the idea is it looks like poo and it's under the radar and you don't even know if it runs unless you know what a ZR tire looks like. Um, and this runs a Hemi SRT8 Fuel-E, five-speed auto, four-wheel disc brakes, independent suspension, rack and pinion, AC, high-end audio, soundproofing. I mean, it's like a, Actually, this thing's the, a Actually, the drop. one question I had about it, I mean, I'm sure it drives really nice, is that AC works well and it's quiet? Yeah. Well, no, I, I, dis, I built the exhaust on this. It's mandrel bent stainless, dual bridged, but it's, it's not obnoxious. Like, if you keep your foot out of it, it's chill. I'm but when you stomp on it. I'm thinking about wind noise, not necessarily. I want the engine. Oh, that, yeah. wing windows suck for wing win for noise, yeah, but I true. love wing windows, so I don't really care. Yeah, and you, it really depends on the body. Like, we added all sorts of bonus extrusions yeah. to drum it down. But the older they get, the harder it is to deal with the yeah. wind noise. Sorry, I did that. It's my fault. But, like, you know, we enhance the welting here mm -hmm. and then supplement it right and don't look too close because i literally hand built this car myself so it's not nearly as good as the stuff we do for clients when was this what year was this this was at least 10 years ago now oh, wow. i think you did this in the garage of the house or you did it here no i did it work at the old okay. shop okay. nights okay. and weekends right. and really then cool. my dumbass just built it because i wanted someone to have to worry about scratching to take the boys out in and go to the beach or skate parks back then they were hardcore and you, then it was after i built it i realized Duh, we should actually do these as a brand. And there's so yeah. much fun. Stupid yeah. business, but fun Yeah, to right. Execute. I mean, all we do is one-off customs. I haven't done a production. Yeah, before. neither of us are that smart. I'd make more money if I did it that yeah, way. Yeah, sure, but, but again, we're not that brave. We'll do it. We'll do it. But the cool thing is that everyone has some sort of emotional relationship with some vintage ride. Yeah. It was granddad's ride or the movie mm -hmm. or the sexy girl drove in high school that they can't get out of the head or whatever it is. Everyone's connected to viscerally right to something and so the range of cars that people have had us execute the derelicts has been super fun right it gives you much more variety but what i was thinking was then the you can go buy one of those cars you could probably buy a car like this for not a lot of money the factory car it doesn't stop well it smells it has no power there's no air conditioning I and mean, that's the foundation of the whole brand right yeah, yeah. because your Same, your minds the rosy <laughs> glasses of memory whatever mm -hmm. the phrase is yeah. then you actually go get that early Bronco or Land Cruiser, whatever it is that you've always wanted. And like, after five miles, you're like, oh shit. The truth is, it's kind of awful. Yeah, they really stink yeah. and they don't stop and they're hard to steer. Yeah. So that's what we try and do is like, uh, divorce you from the martyrdom principally that is the traditional experience. Or Just its fuel usage alone, even with that giant engine. Way better be stop. Half as, yeah, half yeah. as much fuel. 
I did keep the original valve covers from the first gen Hemi and put them on the 6.1 Hemi, so it kind of like gave it. it like a Hot Wheels it funk. It looks, it looks legitimate fun. from the 60s, right? This is one of my cars. Yeah, I've always loved 1800 Volvos. This, this model is called 1800 ES. It was a sport wagon. They only made them 73 and 74. My super geek dream on this platform, though, is the first two year of the P1800 Coupe, the Get Smart car, mm -hmm. um, had the most incredible trim and interior and gauges are like an old uh, Hura Abercrombie watch, like mm -hmm. so cool. So I wanted to do like a revisionist history, do four-wheel independent with a Polestar powertrain, six-speed manual, but Volvo, then Volvo. back date all the trim. Yeah. I bought the car, it's outside, okay. from a 63 1800 coupe. So like do a, what if they had made the ES wagon in 63, not in 73 when they started having more plastic and rubber bumpers and all that stuff. It's, but uh, these are just such great cars and for a stock, 73 model year car, incredibly contemporary experience. Really? Yeah. I like, like to say that about the E-Type, but I've, I've actually never even touched overdrive, one of these until today. Overdrive, disc all the way around, great really? suspension, it's like fuel injected. Like a four speed or five speed overdrive? Four plus a fifth is the overdrive. Okay. Which is silly because you're manual and then you push pull on the dash to engage the overdrive. It's but like external, they keep up right. with traffic, they're comfortable. They, they do really well. They haven't got any love on the valuation. What are they worth though? But I mean, you can get a really nice one for 30 max. And then that's a 59 Benz um, known as the Aldenauer um, because it was uh, the favorite car of the Chancellor of Germany. Um, the, its official name is a 300D. And like in the old days when you went to the Benz dealership, all the cars would be over here. And then the 300 SL Gullwing and Roadster and the Aldenauer would be off to the left. So the sad thing is with these is they've been parted out over the decades because the Goalwing and the SLs were so much more and they share a lot of the mechanical. Oh really? But they're super cool on their own right. In the last two years, 59 and 60, you could get the Wabasto, then these rear quarter the windows class. come out yeah. and you have no B pillar. So like one of the best greenhouses Ever. Yeah, you could see. Oh wow, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, the B pillar is tiny. Oh, it's just brilliantly open. And this car runs and drives pretty good, it's although a fair amount of martyrdom involved. Um, so I want to build a derelict out of this, and I've owned it for several years. But everyone who's wanted to commission the build wanted it to be a reformer, which is like our shiny version. Mm. But it's original paint upholstery. So Wait, I, this I is original paint? Yeah. And, I didn't even and, catch that part. Sorry. And the leather. Look at this patina. Like, wow. No, I, I figured that. We made that, these seat covers. They're just like little doilies uh, covering the original leather, which is still good. So um, I'm just happy to sit here and. Oh, sorry. Just, I just uh, walked by and look at it. It's pretty. Yeah. It's an automatic. All right, let's go see it's some beautifully stuff. made. Like they're just. Tense. Yeah, that's that's why I was. And doing now, the like crane. people are starting to love them and give them some uh, some value some respect yeah they're starting to get some mainstream love so this is the main production floor now's the time of video where most people ask for money or donations or whatever i'm not going to ask you for that what i'm going to say to you is if you want to see more videos and you want to learn more of what we've learned and you want to see a deep dive into a lot of these topics go to our website and buy something we sell everything from motorcycle gear helmets uh, motorcycle parts, specialized tools. We sell lots of things and they've all taken us years to figure out what the best stuff is and we figured it out. So go to revivalcycles.com. There's some really good stuff there. Everything from like kick-ass hand grips from Posh to Radiance LED lighting and everything in between. We want to teach you what we know, but this stuff takes time and it takes real effort to make these videos and make them good for you guys. So go support us by helping yourself to the cool stuff you already need. And it helps us because we make a little bit of profit and then we can justify doing more videos. Thanks for your support.